Hello, uh, Nolly Boy here with another CRT video doing a second one finally. I'm going to try and keep this short as I don't want to waste too much time with Flubber in the middle to get those YouTube views. Um, first off, I just want to credit Stick Freaks for giving me 90% of the information that I'm quoting here. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to his video series on um, color spaces using color emitters in the description. He's uses a, hit on a uh, multi-format PVM, I believe, so mine's a bit different in this context, which is the reason I'm making this video. But I just to make it more of a bite-sized version of what he has so first uh, off i just want to go through a run through of what you'll need to do this in the first place number one you're going to need a color emitter that could be used on a crt i am using the x right color monkey in this case but there are other color emitters that can be used with a crt secondly you're going to need a playstation 3 or another console that can uh, out output s video and component at the same time Thirdly, you're going to need HCFR download. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for that. Um, we're going to be using that for the color grading. And I want to mention that if you're using a color monkey like me, you are going to need to not download the official color monkey software. Just leave that out of it because it will conflict with HCFR and HCFR won't let you use it if you have that downloaded. So don't download that. Fourth, you're going to need the grayscale files and SMPTE. You can find a download for it and uh, from my Google Drive. And I know that sounds sketchy, so in case that's too sketchy for you, because I would leave you a link to where you can find them, but I got them four or five years ago. These wondrous files that are perfect for this. I got these four and five years ago from a thread. Cannot find it for the life of me now. So I wish I could um, send you the link to the thread or whatever but i don't have it anymore <laughs> but i do have the files so they'll be in a google drive but in case that's too sketchy for you also in my google drive are the individual mp4 files you'll need you'll be able to see clearly that they're just mp4 files can't really attach anything to that i don't think you can always do a virus scan in case i wouldn't blame if you did but um the files are there if you need them so the, uh six yeah we're on six no we're on fifth so you're going to want to write down the original values that you have on your CRT, even if um, they've, especially if uh, you've never touched it before, you don't think it's been touched before, just write them down originally because it's going to drive you nuts if you think you messed it up and you don't know what the original values are. So don't get stuck in that rut. Write down your original values always. You're going to need a USB stick formatted to FAT32. You're also going to need S-Video and component cables for the PS3, as uh, in this case, we're gonna be adjusting both aspects of this Vega CRT. You can just do component if you want, but I recommend doing them both. It's just more convenient that way. You're also gonna need a laptop or something in order to um, use the color emitter from. That'd be the last thing you're gonna need. So the settings that will be important here are R drive, G drive, and B drive. Those are for the white points. And then R cut, G cut, and B cut, which are for the black values for color. And also C hue, C color, um, U offset, and V offset. U and V offset are for um, components so that we can get uh, S video and components synced up. The way we're going to use SMPTE here is we're going to adjust the brightness first, which you can see on the screen, I'm just pointing to these black bars here. So the third bar to the right, you're going to want to be able to see that, but the two bars to the left of the third bar, you're, they're gonna have to be, the brightness is gonna have to be brought down to such a point that you can't distinguish between them. To adjust hue and color, you go into the settings and you go to um, the gun uh, settings. It should be like R on, B on, G on, which you can see on screen. I should have this synced up at this point. So you're gonna wanna turn off um, R and G guns to get into blue only mode for this. And then you're gonna wanna go back to hue and color um, and adjust those in order to get these uh, bars on the SMPT lined up. And here I'm showing you what will happen if it's wrong. You'll see how there's a difference between them now but if you do it correctly, it goes back and they're all equal. You have to adjust both hue and color to get the these four bars on screen perfect. And after you're done doing that in component, what you wanna do at that point is switch to S video. And this is where the colorimeter is gonna come into play. So now I've gone into my color HCFR fields on the USB stick and I'm at this 10% screen, which is where we're gonna start off. Not 0%, 10% with the color monkey at least, just doesn't go that low. I'm bringing up HCFR now to show you the software that's playing at the same time while we're doing this. And I wanna mention for this video, I already had it calibrated beforehand to 93K perfectly, 
But just for the sake of changing it to something so you can see the changes in action, I am changing it to 65k with AXNT turned off, which is the red push, which is infamous on Vegas. I personally like it, but for this 65k, I'm turning it off. Back to HDFR though, firstly, I need to say that my video feed of this got corrupted, so I'm just kind of showing still images here, but I'll guide you through regardless, just fine. So over here, you're gonna click new file to go into this menu here, and what you're gonna choose is display as refresh, and then default and default for the other two. Now we go to advanced, under advanced tab we go to preferences, and here we're going to change the white point from 93k to 65k, and go to rec601 as the color space. Now what we're going to do is head over here to the grayscale button, and we're going to go through a scale between uh, 1 to 10, so we got 10%, 20%, 30%, which align respectively with the HCFR field you're seeing on screen here. So basically for the lower ends here, the lower gray sweep, you're going to want to use cut or bias to adjust this. And for the higher end, you're going to want to use drive or gain. In this example here, I can click on the desired gray sweep point value that I need to be at. And I can check the balance between red, blue, and green. So here I have too much red. So I'm going to put down the red by a lot in order to get a perfect black level. And the end goal is to have as low of a delta E as they call it as possible. Under 2.0 is considered acceptable for your delta E. These are the numbers here as I'm highlighting them. But um, the lower you go, the better. So just go as low as you can. And I also want to mention that sometimes you're going to have the white point being like a 0.0, .0 it's like a 0 0.1 delta E, black point 0 0.1, then the middle it just shoots up to 3 or something. I think it's up to your discretion of whether you want to have accurate black points, white points, and sacrifice the mids, or just have a all-rounded uh, accurate grayscale. Totally up to you. I would suggest the former, but it's totally your choice. In the middle of my image, as I'm showing here with my hand movements, I have a spot of burn-in going down the center. It's, it's easier to see in real life as opposed to the camera, especially in this dark situation. I do not want to calibrate from that point of the burn-in, as it's going to give me the wrong black level. But again, it's kind of hard to see where the burn-in is located. So a trick you can do is just look at the black level after and see if it's black. Just kind of eyeball it. And on this particular Vega, what I'm doing here is going to 16 by 9 mode. So I can compare the black edges of the image to the part of the image at the top and bottom, which isn't displaying at all, to see if the black is correct by calibrating at this point, which it was. Lastly, now that S video is calibrated for this grayscale, I'm switching over to component. And the only things I'm using to adjust component are U offset and V offset, which again, control blue and red respectively. To begin with, at the values of six and four, it was already correct. I already had this um, calibrated beforehand, so it was already correct. But I put it back to seven and seven, which was the factory default uh, one that it had when I took it off somebody anyway. I don't know if they changed it, doubt they did. So and as you can see, way too red. So you're probably going to have to adjust this in order to get both of the S video and components synced up. But uh, you have a great day. And if you consider subscribing and liking, that would really help out for a small channel like me. But regardless, have a great day.